Hey there, so in this tutorial I'm going to cover how to create a, actually how to set up a website in Adobe Muse that it's going to be responsive and it's going to adapt to screen sizes from a tablet screen to a big, for example, a big iMac screen or even a big plasma TV screen and anything in between. So I'm viewing this, this website, this example that I did uh, from my laptop. So this is a standard laptop screen. You can see the content. In this case, it's only some dummy text because this tutorial is not about designing. It's just setting up the document and the content to be responsive. So this is the content, some dummy text, and this is the background image that I used. And so if I go smaller than this, you can see that it's um, everything stays in the middle. This is the laptop size. And if I go smaller or smaller, the content, which is the text and the background, stays always in the middle responsively until I reach the tablet size, which is exactly around here. And if I go smaller than this, the horizontal scrolling bar appears at the bottom, which means it's not responsive anymore. It's not functioning for sizes smaller than a tablet. But from a tablet to a big screen, like a very big screen, it'll adapt perfectly. So the way to do this is actually very simple. It's only three steps that you have to know. First, if we go into Muse and we create a new site, the first thing that you have to know is that you have to set the page width. The size of the page width, it's going to be the number in pixels of the smallest that you want to the website to adapt. So the smallest, in this case, I'm going to set it up to go uh, the smallest the smallest that is going to go is a tablet tablet screen which is uh, 768 and um, you could go as smaller than this if you want you could go as small as you want and it'll function but in terms of the design it would be very difficult to design for a for a mobile phone at the same time for a, an iMac screen size so it's for the sake of this design i'm just going to leave it as a tablet the smallest that is going to go is a tablet screen the initial layout is it has to be desktop even though we're designing with a tablet uh, size but it, it's going to be desktop and the only uh, other important thing is center horizontally so all the content and background and everything it'll be center centered horizontally and the rest can be left as is. I just like changing this to zero top and bottom just because I like it. But for this uh, tutorial about responsiveness, the only thing you have to know is here, you have to set the sizes the smallest that you want the website to adapt, the smallest size in pixels and centered horizontally. And we can start. Now, if we open the home page, the next thing that we have to do, and is the second thing that you have to know, is that we have to make the background the size of the background, it's going to be the, the biggest that you want the website to adapt. So we know the smallest is going to be this from 0 to 7, uh, 7, 6, 8, which is the tablet size screen. And now the background, we have to set up the, the wide of the background as the wide, the biggest that we want the website to adapt. So I usually create the background just with a rectangle. I create a, any rectangle here. I change the color so that I can see it. I remove the stroke because it just looks very ugly. And when I have the rectangle selected, I go to to the transform panel and I say I set the width of this rectangle to be as big as I want the website to go. In this case, I'm gonna set it up to go up to a big IMAX screen, which is usually the standard is 1440. So this is the as big as it's gonna go and I usually set the height to be exactly the same I, I usually I usually do perfect squares because I designed websites with, with sections and every section of the website it's a, a usually a perfect square I sometimes you can do it bigger than this you can even go sometimes I go to seven to 1700 and it'll be it'll it'll be It'll look good and it'll be responsive from a tablet to a 1700, which is a plasma TV. Not a huge plasma TV, but it's a, a quite like a normal plasma TV. But in this case, I'm just going to do it uh, to adapt from a tablet to an iMac screen, which is a very big difference. And now usually when I have the, the size of the rectangle set, I go to, I set the, the Y position at zero. First thing I do, so that it'll go right up on top of the browser, like uh, right on the top. And I go to align. 
align to content area and I set it center it in the middle. So now I know it's right on the top and it's exactly in the middle. And if I zoom out to see what's going on, I have the background set and I know that the smallest is gonna go is within these these middle lines here between these two lines is the smallest that's gonna go which is the wide of a tablet screen and the biggest that's gonna go it's the iMac screen which is the outside rectangle uh, which will be the background and I usually remove the stroke of the uh, browser just because I don't like it okay and with this set the third thing that you have to know is uh, you will have to create some content for your website. In this case, I'm, I'm just gonna do it quick. I'm gonna make it quick and I'm just gonna put here some dummy text. The, you usually will have more content on your website, but in this case, um, I'll just put some dummy text. I'll make it white and I'll make it big so that we can see it. And, and I'll put it center in the middle. Now, uh, this is important. You, uh, everything, all the content that you put in your website, it's going to be within these two lines here, within this and this line. It cannot go beyond because if it goes beyond the lines, if someone views the, webs the website in a tablet device, which is this size, it means they won't see this part. It'll be cut off. They will see if you, anything that's going to be within the content, it's going to be visible, it's going to be within these lines. You don't go beyond the lines. That's all that you have to know. The content, it's going to be centered inside here. And now the last thing that you have to know is you select everything, your background and all the content that you put in your website, and you go to the scroll effects, turn on the motion, and set the key position position at zero for everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Key position, it's going to be at zero for everything, including the background. And then the initial motion is going to be one going up, zero going to the side. And the final motion, the same, one going up and zero going to the side. So it's exactly the same initial, initial motion and final motion. This is if you want the website to scroll vertically. If you wanted the website to scroll horizontally, then you would have to set this uh, one going to the side and zero going upwards. But this is going to be the next tutorial, uh, uh, horizontal scrolling. For this tutorial, it's only responsiveness. So in this case, if we view this on the browser right now, it will already be responsive, scrolling normal. And if we go smaller, the text stays in the middle, which is exactly what we want. And it will go from a tablet to a big iMac screen. And if you set the document to be bigger, the backgrounds, well, it will adapt to bigger screens. And if you want to change the background to be an image like I had in my other example, you just go to fill and image and you browse, browse your computer for images. I'll use this one. Fitting, it has to be scale, scale to fill and in the middle, position in the middle so that it will be centered. And if we preview this now, Everything will be centered, text and image, and everything will adapt. If we go smaller, everything will stay in the middle until we reach the tablet size. And so that's that's how you create a responsive website. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I know I have a bloody strong accent, but if you could learn something from it, then I'll be happy. So peace.